the figure season is over, and beaches and swimming pools have appeared in the social networks of our collections instead of ice and skates and food. And not the usual low-fat yogurts and salads, but pasta, fruit and ice cream. There have been legends about the strict diet of figure skaters, and especially figure skaters, and their struggle with weight for a long time, and no one is in a hurry to share the secrets of keeping fit. So what do athletes really eat and do they really eat what they put in stories? In principle, big sport is a story about total self-control and limitations, but it is in complex coordination sports gymnastics, acrobatics, synchronized swimming and figure skating that the athlete's weight seems to be especially important. Complex jumps, supports, acrobatic elements, and now no skater can do without weighing in the morning. In the era of ultra-C in women's skating, every 100 grams has Olympic significance. The difficulty is that girls have problems with weight, begin at a transitional age, when they are expected to get results, and the main starts of life are at stake. How many are ready, and can afford, to go through puberty smoothly and patiently, without breaking into strict diets, magic powders and other unsafe ways not to get fat, in order to preserve the youthful twist? Sports nutritionists are sure that if an athlete manages to pass puberty without disturbing the natural metabolism and without earning health problems, it is easier to control weight further. Experienced figure skaters are able to hear the body and treat it carefully, understanding that they have to pay for unsuccessful experiments with nutrition with a career. But who will believe it at 15? In 2018, Alina Zajitova generally believed that puberty does not bring any problems with weight. And in terms of puberty, when you get fat, it seems to me that this is all fiction. You just need to close your mouth and not eat. Or at least a little bit. I eat, but in small quantities. We understand what figure skaters actually eat and how their views on diets change with age. Bikova, cashews and coffee for breakfast, normal meals only on weekends and on vacation. My diet mainly consists of fats and fiber. Breakfast is a handful of cashews and a cup of coffee. For lunch I eat an apple, a Twix and again drink coffee, it's too hard without it. Why such a strange set? The answer is simple, I can't train on a full stomach. In the evening, I most often have a salad of cherry tomatoes, cucumbers and avocado with olive oil. On weekends, however, I try to have lunch normally eat baked red fish, for example. On vacation, of course, I eat more varied, but precisely because of this, I just can't afford to just lie on the beach. I have a tendency to be overweight, and as soon as I add meat, fruit, cheese, and fish to my diet, I start eating more, then I have to compensate for this and run for 30-40 minutes every day. But I refuse sweets even on vacation, maybe that's why I don't get better so much on vacation," she said sports.ru European champion in pair skating Alexandra Bikova. Stanislava Konstantinova admitted that she had to struggle with weight all her career, without leaving thoughts about ordinary food. When I eat 2% yogurt at dinner, I dream of normal food. My parents laugh at me and call me a slave of the stomach. Stanislava shared her menu for SPORT24, in short it looks like this. Breakfast, buckwheat or oatmeal, whole grain, on water, porridge, soft boiled egg and cheese, or a piece of cheese and buckwheat bread, toast with avocado. When you don't need to keep yourself in shape, with grain bread, at other times, with loaves, scrambled eggs or omelet, less often, tea or a large glass of water. Second breakfast, coffee and yogurt without additives, without sugar. Rarely glazed cheese or a piece of chocolate. Lunch. Soup, piece of meat, cucumber, buckwheat with meat and salad, tomatoes, cucumbers or just cucumbers. Between lunch and dinner yogurt. Supper. Kefir or yogurt. Konstantinova recalls daily weigh-ins before training and how persistently the coaches advised her to lose weight. Therefore, even after standard work in the gym and on the ice, she went out for a run every day for an hour or even more. The hardest thing, according to her, was at the end of the season. Sadness can cover, and then the weight can creep up to 55-56 kilograms. This is very bad. World champion in dancing Victoria Sinitsina recalled, that the most acute issue of weight arose for her in America in 2014 
she and Nikita Kutsalipov went to Michigan for two years to coach Marina Zueva. Then there were hungry days, and the famous rice diet of figure skaters, even food wrap was used. T, it was necessary to finish with it. In America, the food is completely different. I ate the same way as in Moscow, but I immediately noticed that you can get better there even from the Holy Spirit. Marina constantly put me on the scales, I was possessed by fear of them. Before weighing, I took off all the hairpins, elastic bands, chains, ran to the toilet so that, God forbid, an extra gram would not appear. I was crying. When the ice training was over and evening came, I put on pants, three sweatshirts, and once a week I also wrapped myself in a film and ran continuously for an hour. I arranged a hard drying for myself. Yes, I did it only once a week, it's not very good for the heart, but it helped me a lot. Anorexia or other eating disorder has not reached, I was on one diet, on another, on the third, then I started eating one rice. Then I just went crazy on this topic, starting to weigh myself four times a day. This is not normal for a person. Thank God, I have a head on my shoulders, and I have not reached the real problems. Soon she excluded many foods and began to eat a little differently. Marina told me like this, do you want french fries? Eat one stick. Do you want chocolate? Break off the square and eat it. If something is banned forever, I will have a breakdown. In fact, I did not limit myself radically in something, I just began to eat rarely in a little. In the diaries of Sinitsino of those years, however, you will not find any chocolate. But the recordings themselves, posted by Vika in the telegram, give a rare chance to peek at what Olympic-level athletes actually eat. Smoothies, salads from fresh vegetables, lean protein in the form of fish or chicken, restriction of carbohydrates, and, most importantly, portion sizes are a fairly predictable recipe for keeping fit, not only for figure skaters. Today Victoria has moved away from strict diets and found an individual style of nutrition without radical restrictions. Her choice is interval fasting, in which meals take place in a strictly allotted window. In the case of Sinitsina, this is scheme 18-6, she eats one two times a day for six hours, the remaining 18 hours without eating. I don't limit myself in anything. Of course, I don't eat pizza, pasta, potatoes, or fast food all the time, this happens very rarely. Most often, salads, meat, fish, fruits. I have a crazy sweet tooth, I love chocolate. I can allow something unusual after the competition, you can say it's a way to celebrate the results, relax. You prepare for competitions for a month, keep yourself in shape, and then exhale, you still lose weight under stress, so after tournaments you can easily afford everything. Juices are too sweet for me, I will choose them, only if there is nothing to drink at all. I stopped buying soda, I only drink water or mineral water with gas. Athletes have an expression, that soda makes their legs sit down, they get clogged up quickly, get tired. And at some point I quit. I thought it would be hard without these drinks, but I'm out of the habit, I don't even want to buy again," Sinitsina said. By the way, life in America has taught Victoria to drink cold tea and coffee. Cold black coffee is her favorite drink in the heat. The same magic film that Sinitsina mentioned, apparently, is also in the arsenal of the Olympic champion 2022. In the photo, which Anish Cherbakova posted in early February, there was a roll of film and cans of sports nutrition. One of them guesses Squeezy, German protein powder, which was drunk by Yulia Lipnitskaya during the Olympic season 2013-14. The world then learned about Squeezy and his role in the form of Yulia Lipnitskaya from Terry Tutbirds, the coach herself told, what it cost Yulia, to fight with weight before the Olympics, I've never encountered this in my work, she just can't eat at all. And I'm very sorry that she has to endure so much, but I can't do anything about it. She's doing a great job coping with it. When she needs to lose weight, she eats only squeezy powder, it's fiber that gives energy. It's hard for her, and the weight goes down very slowly 100 grams a day. What is this mysterious squeezy? A sports pit that can be bought in specialty stores. Its advertising slogan is lose fat, not power, that is, lose fat, not energy. For athletes who have been taught that fat is the enemy, 
and who know that it is impossible to win without endurance, it sounds attractive. The manufacturer's website says that the powder gets rid of fat without loss of muscle mass, serves as an additional source of energy, protein, essential micronutrients, reduces consumption to 900 kilocalories per day, and its composition allows you to use the product instead of conventional nutrition. The problem is that the temptation to eat squeezy, dissolving it, for example, in kefir, as Lipnitskaya did, instead of any food can become so great that it is not easy to return to the usual diet. As a result, instead of being overweight, figure skaters receive worse diagnosis, for example, anorexia in the case of Lipnitskaya and general eating disorder, RPP, which many suspect. We return to Sturbakova. She, however, did not mention special sports nutrition in the interview, the replicas revolve around the standard I eat everything, but a little. Here is her story, have I ever lost weight? Globally, no, just a little bit. I try not to gain much weight, so that I don't have to throw it off later. Usually I do not limit myself, I try to eat the right food, so that I have the strength to train. At the same time, I understand that, if I forbid myself to eat something, I will have moments of breakdowns. I try not to eat at night, so it turns out to keep weight. Of course, the coaches know that I don't eat only salads, they weigh us, watch us. We do not have a complete exclusion of sweets. In general, I think they know what I eat, we often go out to eat together at competitions, and I have never been severely restricted in food. There is no food that I can't eat. After one of these joint dinners, the phrase that Anya will eat two shrimps for dinner, and she's full went to the people. Daniel Glichengos confirmed that Shcherbakova was lucky, she is not crazy about food, unlike many. But judging by the videos that Anna publishes in the Telegram, she still goes to the competitions with personal weights, so as not to lose control of the situation. On the eve of the Olympics, Shcherbakova admitted that the issue of weight is directly related to jumping, but diet is still not her story. I don't go on diets, I just try to eat right and balanced. It is important for me to maintain a certain weight in order to be in shape to perform jumps. I spend a lot of calories in training, my appetite wakes up. Some athletes refuse to eat before a performance, but I, on the contrary, feel better when I have lunch. Jumping technique and weight were also connected by Alina Zajatova. When you gain weight, the technique of jumping immediately changes. The fat on your arm has grown, you can't jump anymore. She also admitted that during the Olympic season, the weight problem was so acute that she weighed herself three times a day. They also limited water consumption because every 100 grams were critical. So Alina came up with the idea to take a sip before weighing and spit it out. As a reward for winning the Olympics, she got ice cream. 1. Zajatova admitted that her diet on vacation and at competitions differed little. She watched her weight seven days a week, in the morning I get up on the scales. If there is a plus, I limit myself during the day. If the weight is normal, I eat only lunch and a little for dinner. I hardly have breakfast. But Sasha Trusova, apparently, has a calmer relationship with food. She says she eats whatever she wants, there is no diet. However, according to her, it is better not to eat certain foods at night, it is better to pamper yourself in the morning. I don't have a special diet, but I try to eat more protein food. There are no prohibitions as such. But I don't like fast food myself, and I'm completely indifferent to cakes. Therefore, nothing like this happens in my diet. My diet does not change at all during the competition, I eat the same as usual. I don't know who does it, but my mother most often cooks food for me. Traditional dishes? Basically, cottage cheese dishes. For example, cheesecakes or casserole. Most of all I love homemade dumplings. Camila Voliva says little about nutrition, sadly noticing. It's not easy for most people to keep fit, that's how our body works. Yes, I have to limit myself in food, but I'm not starving. I really like ice cream and chocolate. Elizabeth's relationship with food seems to be the same role model as the quadruple sheepskin coat executed at the age of 25. Tiktamashiva does not accept strict diets, feels her body perfectly, and is sensitive to it. Elizabeth's task is to ride for a long time, 
and radical weight loss is a bad helper in this matter. Tiktama Shiva loves meat very much and admits that she even bought herself a special grill for cooking it. I put the meat, it cooked itself in 10 minutes. I've been making lasagna for myself recently. I eat lasagna, yes. I love pasta, bread, flour products. I'm a hedonist with a capital letter. I just don't allow myself to live my life just like that, I have to do it with pleasure, with pleasure. I have already passed all the transitional ages that I could, so now I have found a comfortable diet for myself. And I don't eat much. I can make myself lasagna, but I just try not to overeat. When you leave the table, it should feel like you can run or go to a workout. So that there is no such thing that you have eaten too much, you lie like this. Damn, I don't want to do anything at all. That's the secret. You wait for five minutes, and then you start doing some things, and realize that you are full and not full, and there is energy. Fresh photos of Tiktama Shiva from the training camp in Armenia confirm that Caucasian cuisine does not interfere with the quad. Grill in the kitchen and at Evgenia Medvedeva's. It allows you to cook meat without adding oil, and protein is still the basis of Medvedeva's nutrition, for which it is not difficult to perform in a Pyeongchang costume even now. According to her, it was necessary to resort to extremes in the diet only during the Olympic season, and then not without the help of a nutritionist the relationship with food improved. There are no taboos in the menu, desserts, side dishes, and not diet soups flash and stores, especially Medvedeva loves borscht and solyanka. In competitive times, the diet was simpler, with a mandatory carbohydrate for breakfast, a classic lunch of cutlets and soup, and a traditional salad for dinner for skaters. Daniel Glichengos, when he said that he did not know a figure skater who did not like sweets, clearly meant Medvedev. There was often a chocolate bar in her training bag next to her skates. Genya's secret is to eat this chocolate before, not after class, then the dose of sugar did not affect the figure in any way. Before the Olympics, however, she still had to shrink down as much as possible. At the Olympics, Medvedeva weighed 1.5 kilograms less than her usual weight. It was a difficult period, but I had no other way out. Otherwise, I just wouldn't have rolled out that program. I didn't have too many muscles then, and in this case the body retains water very much. You become heavy and kind of swollen. Therefore, everything was really very tough and caused decent damage to the body. After severe restrictions, athletes often rush to the other extreme, and it is possible to close the refrigerator only with an incredible effort of will. Medvedev did not escape this either. I understood that I could cure all my complexes about food in only one way by allowing myself to eat. When you keep yourself on a very strict diet for many years, and in fact you live half-starved, it takes time to understand that if there is food in the refrigerator, it is not necessary to stuff it all into yourself at once. She's not going anywhere out of this refrigerator. As soon as I laid it all out in my head, the weight began to return to normal. Not only our skaters have problematic relationships with food. Gracie Gold, the main U.S. bet on Saatchi 2014 Gold, admitted that she suffered from a severe eating disorder and practically lived on laxatives. This led to prolonged depression and suicidal moods, from which I had to escape in a special rehabilitation clinic. The next American hope, 16-year-old Alice Liu, unexpectedly ended her career a month ago, unable to withstand constant restrictions and pressure. Liu decided that participation in the Games and the bronze medal of the 2022 World Cup is quite enough, and she will finally be able to have plenty of delicious food. However, figure skaters and coaches do not like to talk in detail about diets or about other ways to combat excess weight, except after completing their careers. Therefore, the kitchen of the skating rinks can be judged only by random phrases dropped in interviews, Tutbridge reported about Squeezy, Blachengos reported about daily weigh-ins in the crystal, we have weigh-ins once a day. If an athlete comes with an advantage of 1.52 kilograms, then he will not jump in class. It can be traumatic. Who is our nutritionist? The Terry Georgievna. They say that the results of the weigh-ins in the crystal are entered in a special notebook, which disciplines athletes stronger than any coach. Blachengos also calls a myth the persistent opinion that figure skaters don't eat anything, in fact, 
They eat even more than ordinary people. They have a growing body, no one forbids them to eat. It is clear that you always need to monitor the sugar content, but no one forbids a chocolate bar. It's about the fact that they can eat a whole cake or 200 candies, that's the problem. And the food should be evenly distributed, it should be moderate. It is also desirable that dinner be before 6 in the evening. Terry speaks extremely harshly about the weight of athletes. There is nowhere without weights on the rink, an athlete's face, in her opinion, not from fatigue or incorrect technique at all. I don't follow their diet. I weigh them. I'm not even weighing it, I'm just asking to be sent to me. It is advisable to weigh yourself every day because it is much easier to solve the problem at the initial stages than when it is already 2-3 kilograms and you really need to lose weight, and when it is 200-300 grams, it's nonsense. But today 200 grams, and every day 200 grams, what will it be in 10 days? I'm trying to explain, a kilogram is nonsense, take a bag of milk, put it in your pocket and run. The athlete loads the body more than necessary, injuries, muscles, ligaments. Fatigue, which will accumulate more, because it's a whole bag of milk. And then we talk, fatigue fracture, so I've been training a lot. Or maybe she let go of weight, lost weight, let go of weight, lost weight. The undercools started, because of the weight, because of fatigue when they lose weight, and not because of insane loads. Are they on diets in men's skating, and if so, on which ones? Svetlana Sokolovskaya, coach of Mark Kondratyuk and Alexander Samrin, told about the attitude to weights and sweets. I have no problems with weight in terms of control for both boys and girls in the group, I have everything here on trust, I do not weigh my athletes. It's just that, if I see some kind of overkill, I can't at some point say something like it's become too much. Well, they answered me, that's it, I understand, we'll fix it. After a vacation, they usually gain a little, of course, but then they quickly get into shape. Does the weight interfere with jumping? I have a slightly different psychology. If you manage to do all my tasks, then it's not so important what your weight is, well, within reasonable limits, of course. Do you like to write in the preponderance, that is, spend twice as much energy, strain harder, well, why not? Although they all see themselves in the mirror, on the set, well, they already look after themselves. We shoot videos at the ice rink every day. They see how they look from the outside. I can hint that, if you lose half a kilo, a kilogram and a half, it will be easier. But I have an adult approach here. No one will run after them and control them, it's up to them, after all. And so, yes, from the first day the skater knows that I don't have a weight frame. People are different, someone is fatter, someone is thinner. Are you coping? Are you comfortable with your body yourself? Well, that's great. I have a daughter, and I remember that there was a period when she began to recover as a teenager. Complexes began. And what would I tell her? It would only make things worse. That's why I always told her that she was my best. And she herself understood that she had to restrain herself somewhere. And if I forced her? I would have found pills for weight loss, I would have caused vomiting, as happens sometimes. If a person comes to the sport, he himself begins to understand such things. No, of course, sometimes there are glimpses of misunderstanding, but they quickly taxi back. When asked if Mark Kondratyuk is as indifferent to sweets as Alexandra Trusova, Sokolovskaya replied with a laugh, no one in her group refuses desserts except a coach. And all the cakes that are given to her, she gives to athletes who eat them with pleasure. Mark is like that in general, he always has some chocolates in his pocket, he can't do without sweets. In general, someone has more, someone has less. I don't want to develop these complexes. Sokolovskaya does not recommend fast food and junk food to anyone, not just athletes. But he admits that both Kondratyuk and Samran sometimes indulge in them, and Mark, who recently left the juniors, allows himself hamburgers more often, you can't forbid it, well, if you want to. So, rarely, but it happens. Unlike other athletes of the Russian national team who complained about unusual food at the Olympics in Beijing, Skolovskaya remembers a trip to China with pleasure, we had a great meal there. 
I don't know where these conversations came from about difficulties with food. You know, we don't often eat Peking duck at home, but they're every day. For Mark, there was a paradise there of all, so many sweets, a huge selection of chocolate. So he did not deny himself anything. Well, yes, there was a specific food, we didn't eat it, and salads fish meat could always be found. I wonder if the day will come when Svetlana Sokolovskaya's approach will be adopted by other Russian coaches, realizing that the famous don't eat from Maya Plisitskaya did not refer to girls and girls at all? And consultations of nutritionists and nutritionists will turn from incomprehensible bliss into part of the usual work at the rink. If, of course, athletes and their coaches are ready to work for a long time and not only with a youthful body.